Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day today. Uh, it's good to be with you again and have another Christmas story here for you. And I think you're gonna, going to like this one. It's, uh, it's about the, the poinsettia. I love the poinsettia plant. Got a few of them here behind me. Uh, they're so beautiful, especially in the red. Uh, just so bright and uh, cheery. But this story is called The Parallel of Poinsettia and it's written by Angela Elwell Hunt. And uh, it's a good, a sweet story, a little different than some of the others I've told. And it, uh, it begins actually on December 26th, which is uh, actually my dad's birthday. And so he could identify with, uh, with this story for sure. Well, this is how it goes. Andalina Rodriguez was born on the 26th day of December and almost Christmas birthday. Though some people might think a birthday during the holidays is another wonderful reason to make merry. And Alina thought her after Christmas birthday was about as much fun as watching trees grow. Many of her presents were wrapped in leftover red and green foil and her friends never wanted to come to her birthday parties because they were too busy playing with their Christmas toys. And Alina's parents did their best to make her birthday seem like everyone else's. They decorated the house with bright blue and pink balloons and her mother always baked an ordinary birthday cake. Her father made certain that his gifts were never ever wrapped in red or green foil. Aunt Dominga seemed to understand too, though she lived far away in Mexico, she always sent Andalina a beautiful birthstone for her birthday. One year a ring, the next year a bracelet, the next a, a, ne a necklace. Andalina's birthstone was icy blue, as delicate as a diamond, and Aunt Dominga's note always said, for my wonderful niece, the special birthday stone for a special December child. When the doorbell rang on Andalina's 10th birthday, she opened the door to discover a florist holding, holding a large poinsettia plant. The attached card said, for my wonderful niece, the special De December flower for a special December child. A poinsettia? That was a Christmas flower. Andalina, Andalina carried the plant inside and set it on the floor next to the drooping Christmas tree. She tried to swallow the lump that rose in her throat. Aunt Dominga didn't understand at all. December passed and the Christmas decorations were put away. Andalina took the poinsettia outside and left it on the back porch. The bright red leaves curled and fell off and soon nothing remained but a stalk. You should take care of your plant, her mother told her. It's a living thing, you know. It has sun and water, Andalina said, shrugging. It's okay. And it was. And it was. But that spring, as the little poinsettia grew full and bright with green, green, Andalina's mother became very sick. She had, had to stay in bed all the time, so Aunt Dominga came from Mexico to help. Hola, little one, she said, pressing her cheek to Andalina's after she had brought her suitcase into the house. And how is my special niece? Okay, I guess, Andalina answered. You're so big, Aunt Dominga knelt in front of Andalina. I hope the plant I sent you is growing too. The poinsettias in Mexico grow to be 10 feet tall. It's growing, Andalina said, not really caring how tall a poinsettia could get. Spring warmed into summer. Andalina's mother did not get better, so Aunt Dominga took over the running of the house. She cooked the meals and cleaned the floors and tended the garden. Often Andalina saw her aunt fussing over the poinsettias on the back porch. She kept the stalks trimmed and the soil moist, but Andalina didn't care. As the autumn leaves began to toast golden brown and fall from the trees, Andalina's mother had to go to the hospital. She was very, very sick. Aunt Dominga explained and no one knew when she would uh, come home again. Leaving her aunt in the house, Andalina went to the back porch and sat down on a bench. She felt like there were tiny hands wringing her heart, squeezing hard until there was almost no feeling left. She lifted her eyes and saw the poinsettia she had ignored, now lush and green. How could it be so pretty, so healthy, when her mother was not? I hate you, Andalina said, suddenly angry. You're not alive, you're just a dumb weed. Gathering all her strength, Andalina lifted the plant. She carried it towards the woods behind her house, swaying from side to side as she struggled under the weight of the heavy pot. She found a dark spot under the evergreen, shaded from the life-giving sun. Andalina didn't care if the plant died. She didn't want Aunt Dominga in the house, and she didn't want that stupid poinsettia. She wanted her mother. All through October, November, and early December, Aunt Dominga saw Andalina off to school in the mornings and then went to the hospital. Alone at home in the afternoons, Andalina did her homework and chores and then sat by the front window and prayed. 
Christmas was coming, but no one in her family had time for candy canes or parties or decorating. They were too busy praying for her mother. On Christmas Eve, Andalina's father called and said that she must pray very hard for her mother was weaker than she had ever been. Andalina fell to her knees and cried, begging God for help. A soft touch woke her the next morning. Aunt Dominga's hand was on Andalina's shoulder, shaking her gently. Merry Christmas, child, she said, simply sinking to the floor where Andalina had fallen asleep. God has answered your prayers. Your mother is better. A flood of emotions poured through Andalina's heart, joy, relief, sadness, and guilt. Oh, I'm so glad, she cried, throwing her arms about her aunt's shoulders. And I'm so sorry, Auntie. I was angry. I wanted you to leave. I even tried to kill the poinsettia you gave me. Aunt Dominga's hand stopped stroking Andalina's hair. What? she asked, her voice a surprised whisper. I wondered where it had gone. I hid it in the woods, Andalina confessed, palming tears from her eyes. Deep under the trees where it wouldn't get any sun. Aunt Dominga was silent for a moment, and then her tired eyes brightened with a smile. Come, child, she said, holding her hand out her hand as she stood up. Show me. Andalina's heart was heavy as she led her aunt into the woods. She had done a wicked thing, for Aunt Dominga had done nothing but help. Now the poinsettia would certainly be ruined, for all plants needed lots of sunlight. When Andalina found the shady spot deep among the trees, she gasped. The poinsettia sat there still, but it looked nothing like it had when she left it. The leaves had been spindly and green, were now wide and red, as bright as a spill of crimson velvet over an emerald carpet. I thought it would die, she whispered, staring at the lovely flowers. Aunt Dominga's arms slipped around Andalina's shoulders. You were upset, child, and you didn't understand the way God works. The poinsettia is a special plant. It needs long hours of dark to develop its pretty red leaves. If you had left it near the lights of the house, it would still be plain and green. Carefully, she turned, Andal turned Andalina to face her, then stooped to look into the girl's eyes. You are as special as that poinsettia, child, and one day soon you will bloom just as beautifully. When you pass through long months of darkness and waiting, you can have peace, knowing you are in the hands of the master gardener. God, Andalina asked, blinking back tears of wonder. Yes, Aunt Dominga. Uh, Aunt Dominga's dark eyes softened as she looked at the exquisite plant. It is fitting that we should find this today at Christmas, for the world was dark and waiting when Jesus was born to bring us hope and light. That's why the poinsettia is the December flower. Aunt Dominga, Andalina said, moving toward the plant, will you help me carry it back to the house? Aunt Dominga did, and when they reached the porch, they placed the poinsettia in a spot where everyone could see its splash of vivid color from inside the kitchen window. As darkness drew down over the twinkling lights of the neighborhood, Andalina's father came home, a smile on his face. He hugged his daughter, wished her a Merry Christmas, and said that her mother would soon be back home. And I, Dominga said, standing in the kitchen, had better make plans for the birthday cake I'll bake tomorrow. What sort of cake would you like, Andalina? I think Andalina said, smiling as she looked out the window at the bright blooms, that I'd like a different kind of birthday cake this year, a white one decorated with red poinsettia. <laughs> uh, again, I love that story. It's a sweet story, isn't it? Uh, something of beauty, something to think about as we, you know, this Christmas season, we may have poinsettias in our house. And I love that idea of sort of thinking about how Jesus came into darkness and he brought light he brought hope and that's what he does for all of us and and you know this is a rough time of year rough christmas rough season and it's it's hard for so many and but especially this year with covid and everything and we we can just think of christmas as as jesus coming into our darkness to bring us light and hope well let's pray together lord we thank you we praise you we thank you for the gift of jesus again lord this season just keep reminding us of what a gift he is, of how he did bring light and hope into our dark world. Uh, even in years where there's a, a, a COVID uh, sickness going around, Lord, we thank you that you are still present. You are still giving us hope and bringing light into our darkness. Lord, be with doctors and nurses and first responders, Lord. Help them all. Uh, keep them safe. Give them strength. Help them each and every day. Help them to know that you are with them that you are empowering them. Lord, we just lift them up to you. Uh, be with those that uh, have it right now, Lord. There's several, and 
Uh, there's so many, we, we, several we know, and we pray, Lord, your blessing on them. Give them strength and help them each and every day. Uh, just, just be near to them. Bring healing to their bodies. Uh, be with those that are, are homebound in nursing homes, Lord. We just ask your blessing on them. Encourage them. And It's hard not being able to see family and, and friends and all, especially this time of year. And We just ask your blessing on them as well. Lord, thank you again for this season. Just continue to remind us of who you are, what an amazing gift Jesus was at that first Christmas. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for watching again today. Uh, don't forget tomorrow we'll uh, have our, our Christmas program. will be online. I'll do a story as well. Uh, you can catch up both of those on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, but have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later. Goodbye.